Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Barber and this is day 14 and I'm back with a message, a story, a poem, and an activity just for you. And here is Mr. Piggle. So check out Mr. Piggle. Mr. Piggle always feels the same. Mr. Piggle feels slightly confused, pretty cheerful. If we throw Mr. Piggle like we do in our game, Mr. Piggle feels fine. If we ignore Mr. Piggle, don't spend any time with him. Mr. Piggle feels fine. You know why? Because he's not real. He is a toy. Toys don't have feelings unless we pretend. And then that's just imaginary feelings. But we have feelings. You and I, we have real feelings. And today I had a feeling that I don't really love to have, but I don't know why, because it's just part of being alive and being human. And that is that I was grumpy. I was grouchy. I got angry over something, something that I couldn't control. And it made me grump. And I talked to Russell about it and talked to Rose about it. And then I still felt a little like a grump. And I tried some breathing and it felt a little like a grump. And after a while, it did go away. The, the angry feeling went away. The bummed out feeling went away. But while I was having it, I said, you know what? This is okay. It is okay to be angry sometimes. It's okay to use our tools to talk to each other and breathing exercises and try to find something that makes us happy. And for me, that was painting. Later today, I painted for five hours. After school was over, I painted my porch pretty flower patterns for five hours and made me feel better. But really, I'm saying it's okay for us to have a bad day, a bad moment, an emotion. It means you're alive and you're a human. So that inspired me today to pick The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carle. And it inspired me to pick a grouchy poem about a funny girl. And afterwards, we're going to do a not grouchy activity because Russell and Rose and I went on a walk when I wasn't grouchy. And I picked some things for today's activity. So here we go. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carle, a brilliant author, um, one of my very favorites and yours too. And he uses collage. So he paints a paper, cuts it out, makes it into the shape the grouchy ladybug. This is my neighbor little girl's favorite story when she was five. She wanted everything grouchy ladybug. The grouchy ladybug. Aphids are very small insects. They suck the juice from leaves and then the leaves die. Ladybugs eat aphids. That's good for trees, shrubs, and other plants that have leaves. To the ladybugs, I have dedicated this book. Three cheers for them. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're mine. All mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to, be, do you want to fight me for them? Good morning. If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other ladybug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew off. Go away. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At seven o'clock, it saw a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew and flew off. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. 
At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, they're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At ten o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At eleven, it bumped into a whoo skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At twelve noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake. Right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. <laughs> oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not big enough said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? But the whale didn't answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, Hey, you! Want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, you! Want to fight? <laughs> and the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. Ah, there you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Ow, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Thank you. You're welcome. Soon all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You're welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies who'd been sleeping all day came out to dance around the moon. So just like me today, started out a little grumpy. I didn't want to fight anybody, but my day did get better at the end. This is a silly tantrum poem by Jack Pileski, Something Big Has Been Here. It's about Belinda Blue. Belinda Blue was furious. She fumed, I'm really mad. This is the worst experience that I have ever had. She beat her fist against the wall. She pounded on the floor. I am livid, she exploded. I am billowous to the core. She wrung her hands and tore her hair. Her tantrum grew and grew. I am angry, angry, angry shrieked in rage Belinda Blue. She seemed to be beside herself. She raced around the room. She roared so loud the neighbors thought they'd heard a sonic boom. Her rage was unabated. 
It appeared she'd never quit. In fact, she seemed to savor every second of her fit. Belinda Blue created such an overwhelming scene because, at lunch, her mother said, Please eat just one green bean. Her tantrum was over a bean. And sometimes our angry feelings can be over something so tiny as a bean. Okay, the ending is the activity. So I have here a bowl of water, and I have here some lovely, lovely dandelions. Dandelions grow like weeds um, around my yard. And so we just pulled some up. We went on a nature walk, and I just pulled some up. And we went on a nature walk, you and I last year around this time and we got our dandelion stems and we did dandelion science with them this is something my mommy taught me when i was little and i would say mom i don't have anything to do and she would tell me go outside and play with nature play with the leaves make a home for some some uh, fairies or use your imagination adrian that's what my mom would say so you take a dandelion stem and it looks like a straw and you peel down one side and you pop it and peel it again. You make the other side two. Sometimes you can just do two. And you put it in the water and it turns a curly doodle. And you can make tiny little fun things out of dandelion stems. When you go on a walk with mom and dad, maybe you can find some dandelion stems. They are weeds. And they curl up into cute little curly cues. So I could spend all day doing this, but it's way more fun for you to go and do it yourself. See what you can make out of some dandelion stems in your yard. Don't stick your fingers in your mouth. This stuff tastes terrible. I love you. I'm glad that I could share my day with you. Even though it was a little grumpy, it ended very nice. And this has been the highlight of my day is talking to you. Bye.